We're talking Bengals, Ravens, Chiefs. And I'll start with you, Sterling. I'm going to say the Cincinnati Bengals because Superman without his cape is just Clark Kent. And when Joe Burrow showed back up healthy, the Cincinnati Bengals looked like a different team. I've seen this movie with Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens running up and down the field, Lamar doing his thing. They didn't get to the big dance. When Joe Burrow shows up, all they do is they believe. He's like the Cincinnati Bengals genie. And they can rub him and they feel like they can go anywhere they want because they have him. He's dispatched of Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills. He has been to Kansas City and he has seen that monster. He is dispatched of them. When you look at these football teams, everyone in the AFC scared to death of the Cincinnati Bengals. I'm going to disagree with you, believe it or not. I, that's very hard for me to do, Sterling Sharp, but I, I, I'm going to have to, and I see where your brother get his one-liners from. I hear you. you know, what I'm saying? I get it. But I got to tell you, the last time we've seen the Ravens, number one in scoring defense, number two in total defense, was when this brother Shannon Sharp was on that team in 2000 when they won the Super Bowl. This is a team, their defense is elite. Now, I expected a lot of things from the Baltimore Ravens mm -hmm. this year, particularly offensively, knowing that Lamar Jackson finally got his bag, which which was well deserved, and yes. I thought he was going to put on the show. I didn't anticipate the defense looking this tough. Yesterday, three points, allowed just six first downs, giving up 151 total yards, a minuscule 2.3 yards per play, one for 12 on third downs they allowed Seattle. We were looking at Seattle, particularly. No, with you the, were looking <laughs> at Seattle. <laughs> right, right, right. I'm getting ready to get there. I'm getting ready to get there, sir. I'm getting ready to get there. I know I got to go against both, y'all. I mean, come on. But I got to tell you this. I'm looking at Seattle, and I'm saying the way San Francisco struggling, Seattle, Detroit, Dallas mm -hmm. getting in the way of Philadelphia, along with San Francisco. But then I looked at this Ravens defense and I said, my Lord, yeah. the, these brothers are special. And that is what is standing out with me right now. That's why I say Ravens yesterday. Well, I'm going to have to disagree with you also, and I'm going to have to disagree with my new brother now, my television brother. The Ravens outgained Seattle 515 to 151. There's only 60 minutes in a ball game. The Ravens possessed the football for over 40 of those minutes. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Two top five offenses. They held the Lions last week to six points. Yep. This week, Seattle top five offense yep. to three points. Mm -hmm. Let that sink in. So now, not only are they running the football, the fourth highest rush total in, in Ravens history, 298 yards running the football. And Lamar Jackson throwing the football. He was efficient. Only had 187 yards, but he was efficient in throwing the football. That team right there, that is a team that you do not want to face because you know they can run it. Yeah. You already know they can run it. And now Lamar Jackson is efficient at throwing the football, right. and they got a defense that can shut you down. Mm -hmm. That's the best and team by in the football. way, Sterling, Lamar Jackson didn't account for a single touchdown yesterday. No. Who's the most dangerous team in the AFC, Sterling? I, I still have to go with Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals, but here's why. When you look at confidence, you go, okay, who do we have to face if this thing keeps going? Baltimore's in our division, so we know them and we're going to see them. We've already been to Kansas City and dispatched them. We just got rid of Buffalo on Sunday night. This is a football team that if all things being equal, they can stay as healthy as they are right now. The way Joe Mixon is starting to run the football. They don't fear anyone, but everyone fears them because they've gone into Kansas City and played big and gotten to a Super Bowl. Lamar Jackson, for all his wonderful play, uh, uh, MVP in our league, couldn't get his team to the big dance. Joe Burrow did that. And so when you look at confidence, and I think that, a, that that is one of the biggest things that people lose is their confidence. Mm -hmm. But when the Cincinnati Bengals got Joe Burrow back at quarterback, right. their confidence went sky high. Again, I would, I would respectfully disagree with you, which is hard for me to say because I've been raving about Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati yes, Bengals yes, all so long. Without, and I'm still not stopping. It's just that now I'm paying attention to two components, Sterling. Number one, the defense, which I already articulated. Number two, this kid Keaton Mitchell, and then Cat have carry all season long, rushed for 138 yards yesterday. This is a team that was being maligned for not trading for a running back before the trading deadline, True. right? And then the next thing you know, they show up and they rush for 238 yards the very next game. Whatever you perceive as being their weakness, the Baltimore Ravens step up to the plate and say, nah, we know what we're doing. And with Lamar Jackson doing what he's doing, it could get very interesting because remember, I, if they have a better record, it'll be in Baltimore. I just look at it like this, though. In a quarterback-driven league, right. and we've seen some horrendous Right. Roughing the passer calls because totally. we're trying totally. to protect that guy. Yes. 
I've seen Lamar in big situations so down the stretch. Yeah, you're right. I've seen Joe Burrow right. in big situations mm. down the stretch. I'm not even going to go back to college because I think it's unfair comparison. Okay. But in the NFL, in a quarterback-driven league, mm -hmm. that guy has to be like, has to meet Patrick Mahomes on his level, and I think Burrow does. So I, I understand that he's Joe Cool, and I get what you're saying, but in Lamar's defense, do you feel like he didn't have the weapons? No, I, I think that's you dance with the girl you brought and the girl that they gave him. Hey, look, this is what you did. You got to be the best team in the AFC. You didn't get it done. Joe Burrow was not the best team in the NFC and he got his team had to go into Kansas City to get it done. I, I just think that confidence goes a long way in a quarterback driven league. I'm going to go with the Ravens also, but here's what, here's what, and this is why, Molly, I'm going to yeah. say, disagree with your point about him not having the receivers because he didn't I'm have. I'm not saying this year, no. though. I'm saying in the past. But he didn't have those receivers and won a unanimous MVP. Yes, so he did. 30, That's true. 36 touchdowns, six interceptions. Yeah. He was throwing to somebody. That's right. I'm going to take the Baltimore Ravens because this is why I'm going to take the Ravens. They can keep Joe Burrow off the field. Because when you can run the ball for 298 yards, tick, 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 yeah. tick, 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 tick. So now, and with that defense, the way they can pull, because now, how many possessions are you going to have? Mm -hmm. We saw Philly almost win the Super Bowl by well, taking me, the clock down to like two seconds before okay, they snap Real quick, yeah. real quick question for both of y'all. What about the notion, this ain't basketball, this is football, so Lamar Jackson going against Cincy defense, is a little bit different than Joe Burrow going against this Ravens, this Ravens defense. What about I, that? But that's what I'm saying. We're, they're in the same division, okay. and Joe Cool is not afraid of them. You're right. And that's We're gonna, dealing that with confidence, sharps. man. Yeah. Well, sharps don't have any excuses. They don't want to hear. We don't. Yeah. They, the thing is, they've already Ravens have on. already Last beaten Cincinnati. Okay. All right, because I want to show two other quarterbacks who balled out. I want to show them yeah, some love. Man. Starting with Texans rookie cornerback C.J. Stroud, he put on an absolute show and a thrilling victory against the Bucks. Not only did he toss five TDs? He threw for 470 yards, a record for the most pass yards in a game by a rookie in NFL history. Meanwhile, Josh Dobbs thrust into action due to an injury to Jaron Hall, despite being picked up by the Vikings less than a week ago. He did not disappoint, tossing the game-winning touchdowns pass with 22 seconds left. Guys, they were joking. He didn't even know some of his receivers' names. So with that being said, who was more impressive? Was it Dobbs or Stroud, Stephen A? I'm going with Stroud, fellas. Oh, God. I'm going with Strauss, man. I listen. I'm, I'm, I'm not doing this show again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not coming back here. <laughs> no, I'm like, listen. I will say this: if he were not a rookie, I would have rolled with Dobbs. But the fact that Stroud is a rookie throwing for nearly 500 yards, mm -hmm. five drafted touchdowns, in the first round. not a single, not a single interception. I mean, it, 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 drafted I love, in the first I round. I love Bryce Young, but it got me looking at Carolina like, damn, you messed up. You messed up really bad. Really like they got yes. you messed up really bad by passing up on this brother. And I know, and and, and Dobbs, as good as he was yesterday. A lot of it was running the football yes. to key runs. In a quarterback-driven league. I understand that. I understand that. I get that stuff. Remember, what are we, what are, I keep trying to tell the brother, brilliant, because I know I'm not. I, listen to you. I, was, I was watching you for years. I was watching you for years. Still, I know what I'm saying. But I'm just telling you, I'm looking at Stroud flinging this football, and I'm yeah. like, damn, this brother is special. But special. Joshua Dobbs have learned five playbooks in a year. Okay. He didn't take a single snap. He doesn't even know the play, Stephen A. Well, he did Friday. They were studying for two hours, Ken. They were studying for two hours. And he is, he is a nuclear physicist. I mean, he's a genius. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah, he has that's right. Great. Straight A student. But think about, yes. This, this, yes. Is the, this is the NFL. Right. You come in and don't take a snap. You don't even know the guy's name. And he told the guys yesterday, don't ask me into my teammate's name because I really don't know him right now. Wow. And to win an NFL mm -hmm. game on the road? Wow. <sighs> I like doing this show because I can just say what he said. You know, <laughs> and we can keep it moving. Keep it in the, keep it in the family. I, I said Josh Dobbs as well. I just don't think you 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 go from one city. You know, this is like a, a tour band. Yeah. He's in one city this week and he's doing his performance. He goes to another city. I, I agree. Josh Dobbs was impressive. And CJ was impressive. I mean, you think about 470 yards, the most for a rookie. Three different receivers yeah. had at least 100 yards on a touchdown. But to come into a situation where you haven't taken a snap all week and you yeah. crammed to get the yeah. Yeah. Cram to get the playbook in. Yep. Man, that was unbelievable. At the top pick, Bryce Young did not have a great Sunday. He threw three interceptions, including two pick sixes, as the Panthers fell to one and seven on the season. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Stephen A., did the Panthers make a mistake passing on C.J. Stroud and drafting Bryce Young number one overall? Well, I'm going to say this. It damn sure looks that way. <laughs> it damn sure looks <laughs> that way. Everybody. I was, I, to everybody. 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 I'm gonna say, but I'm not going to go any further than that for this reason. Right. 
Number one, I don't know if Frank Reich's the right coach ooh, for that coach ooh, for that franchise. Okay. I don't know if he's the right coach for that. That part. Number that part. Number two, you don't have protection for him. That part. So you and number three, he undersized. So you got an undersized dude, devoid of protection, in the National Football League as a rookie. With a coach that I'm not sure is the right dude for the job. So again, it doesn't it damn sure look that way. <laughs> but in the same breath, I'm not going to, to to like engage in a stronger level of condemnation against him because I don't know what he's working with as a rookie, an undersized rookie. Mm. I, I agree with everything you say. I agree. I say no is too soon. We got to get him some talent also. Yeah. I mean, his best receiver that would have been there is DJ Moore. He's mm -hmm. in Chicago. That's right. They wanted him in order for to get that that first round draft, yeah. the number one overall draft pick. I just think I think once they get him some better talent, I think he'll show better. But you're absolutely right. You got to protect the kid. He's small yeah, yeah. and he can't small. take those. He can't take that you kind of. You're talking about getting him some talent. I don't think he's going to be alive to be able to play with that talent. <laughs> that? The way he's getting beat up. You know, I, I like doing him. this show because you guys, for the most part, you're a little slow on some things. <laughs> but for the most part, y'all see the game the same way. <laughs> You said, but he called you out too. I can cut, oh he called Little Bro Me out too. Me being here, I can cut this show down to 22 minutes. There we go. There we go. <laughs>